Hey everybody, this is Rustin Rose with Metalholic Magazine, and with me today, Rana Frolic from Legacy of Disorder, from New Zealand's Legacy of Disorder. How often do you get to say New Zealand when you're talking about metal bands? No, 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 it's not. Um, funny, funny enough, um, the guitar player from Dragon Force is a Kiwi, but yeah, um, no, no, it's not that often over here in America, isn't it? So you guys are out on tour right now with Guar and Municipal Waste. How's the tour going so far? Uh, the tour's been awesome, Rustin. Um, the guys are really, really cool. All the band, all the band members are really cool. We made to feel at home, and um, we've been getting a really, really good response for an opening band. It's been, um, it's been uh, pretty, pretty darn good. Like um, a, a lot of Guar fans are very, um, you know. I'm pretty relentless at liking war, and um, we've been getting circle pits happening at times, and it's been really good so far, and I think it'll carry on being really good. Now, did is this your guys' first U.S. tour? Did you guys get a tour on the last album, or is this the first time around? This is the first um, professional uh, tour, you know. We, we played a lot of bum, you know, a lot, a lot of smaller shows in Dallas and that, but we'll call them promotional tours. But this time around, we have our visas and we're on a proper tour. So I sort of look at this as the first proper tour, really. Nice. Well, welcome to America. It's awesome to have you here because you're bringing some awesome heavy metal with you. And uh, Thank you. Yeah, we can't be more excited. Well, first, let's, let's backtrack a little bit. Before you even started the band, I heard you were actually a lumberjack for like 12 years? Yeah, I cut down trees and drove machinery and, and you know... Yeah, did that lumberjack work. But I mean, I was always playing my guitar, and I often was playing in a band. But um, that's what I did for work. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I mean, I was just sitting here thinking, boy, as a guitar player, that's got to be scary, working in a job like that where you're putting your hands at risk every day. I, I just, I just wasn't stupid, Rustin. <laughs> <laughs> like um, like um, you know, there are times when certain people at work, you know, who um, you know, would be like um. You know, you should do that or do that. I trust my own instinct, and if, you know, I didn't have any accidents in the bush, so <laughs> Thank logging. So, and, and I, I was very fussy about my hands. Yeah. Now, you guys, um, you guys came together after a number of years of trying to find the right people and everything, and you connected with Sterling Winfield, our, our dear friend down in Dallas, who uh, produced Damage Plan, worked with Hell Yeah and Pantera and everything. Um, and I know Dimebag is like your hero guitar wise. So how did you connect with Sterling and end up uh, having him produce that that debut album? Well, it was really funny. Um, a record um, label or well, distribution label in, in New Zealand um, threw out some names, and one of them was Sterling, which which I picked up on straight away. You know, from seeing him on the Pantera home videos and. And reading, you know, the inlays of their CD, um, you know, booklets and whatnot. And so we were pretty excited about it. And um, that, that's how it really came about. And uh, it was a pretty awesome experience. And the second album was um, was uh, e- even better, really, because we were so much more comfortable with each other. It was right. really good. Right. So, and, and the new the new album, Last Man Standing, which I believe is coming out in May. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're really hoping to get a distribution deal here in America. Um, we're, we're, we're selling it on the road you know, at shows. Right. But we really need to get a distribution deal so we can um, bring, pump it out. You know, it's a strong album. Absolutely, it's an excellent album. Um, very, Thank you. You, you have a, your own signature sound, but you can really hear elements of a lot of the stuff that all metal fans love. So uh, uh, we can't wait to hear the whole thing. Um, and obviously, if you're listening out there and, and Guar's coming to your neck of the woods, get out there and see the show and get there early and check out Legacy of Disorder. Um, now, how from from doing the first album to doing this one, obviously having Sterling there as sort of the glue that keeps the fabric of continuity together, if you will, um, helped. But how how is this album different than the first album, do you think? I think... Um uh, on the second album here, we, we cut off all the fat, you know, in a, in a matter of our words. Um, I, I listened to the first album, and I still think it was a really, really good album for our, for our debut. You know, um, but there's 
it's a um, we, we, we get to the meat of, we get to the meat and potatoes a lot quicker on the new album songwriting wise. Like um, you know, sometimes you might play a riff and, and it might be fun for you, and you might think it's great, and that so you might play it um, three times or four times, and only really needs to be played twice. You know, things like that. We we, we refined it, I, I believe, refined it. Um, so it gets to the choruses, you know, and, and the hooks quicker, just a little bit quicker. But um, I also saying this, I think that the first album was, um, and still is a very strong album, but I think the second one is a step up, and I think that's the way it should be. You know, as a band, you should be getting better. You should not be getting worse. <laughs> right, progression each time. Yeah. And uh, and unfortunately, I haven't heard the first album yet, so I can't really say. And I'm looking forward to hearing that as well. But uh, as I said, this one's an excellent, strong impact and everything. Now, for you as a guitar player, how did working with Sterling, you know, who obviously worked with Dimebag and everything, how did he impact, if at all, your guitar playing? What did you take away from working with him that helped you as a guitarist? Uh, I took away heaps on the on the first um. On the first album, our debut, um, I, I just listened. I, I asked a lot of questions. Me and Sterling had some pretty heartbreaking sort of moments. It was, um, you know, I felt the pressure. Um, being like a band from New Zealand, who's come over to record with them. Um, it was like, um, I, le- I learned a lot, actually. Just shit loads, really, about um, how to get things really tight in the studio. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, me, me and Sterling has got quite a good relationship, quite a quite a good um, friendship actually. And I think I'm um, partially that that whole thing of um, being a single guitarist in a band, like being a four piece, the same lineup, sort of as what say a band like Pantera had. And we we all, I do play the lead, and I play all the rhythm. And I think um, yeah, I couldn't really begin to um, I wouldn't be able to fit in all the things I learned from that first time either, and I carry on to learn. Um, just um timing, just everything, just, just get tight, you know, tone. So, I mean, it's been a great experience. I feel really privileged. I've had um, the opportunity to work with Sterling and do two albums with him now. And um, we'll be doing the third with him also. Right. Now, introduce us, if you will, to the other members of the band, because I know you got a couple of couple of your brothers from back home um, are in the band, and then, of course, you connected with Matt Thompson from, uh, well, he used to be in King Diamond, if I remember correctly. So. Yeah, um, well, James is our vocalist, James Robinson. He, he's our vocalist. Um, and Jace, his nickname's Jace Bass. He plays the bass. He's got Matt on drums. And um, yeah, so when it comes to the writing, um, it's normally me, Jace, and James. We know there's certain songs that we'll want to write lyrics for individually or whatnot. You know what I mean? That's um, it's pretty much a team team effort. You know, being a guitar player, I write a lot of the music. Right. And a few bit of the lyrics, but the see the thing is, you know, that it's like um you might you might take a whole song to the guys, you know what I mean? But but it, it, it's it's when you hear the bass come in and chase do his part, what he wants to put into that song and you know, the vocal style of the way James wants to put the vocal style in and then that and that makes the overall, you know what I mean? There right. there's no there's no me in the word team. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, and that's the thing. I mean, if you guys all have to play it, you all got to be on the same page with it. Otherwise, it's just not going to be real for everybody. So and that's right. Now, your your uh, James just uh, did a list for Noise Creep of uh, five albums that kick his butt. But for you as a guitar player, um, name for me, if you would, five essential metal albums that every guitarist should own. Number of the Beast, Fire oh, Maiden. Okay, for me, Great Southern Trinkle by Pantera, Rain and Blood by Slayer, Painkiller by Judas Beast. And let me think here, um, I, I want to say it, it's so hard when you only have to pick five. <laughs> um, I'm thinking, um, you know, I'm going to have to, the last one here I pick, I'm either going to go back to the, to the originators of where it came from, Black Sabbath, or otherwise I'm going to have to go to a... Um, there's some of the Lena God stuff I'm really enjoying. And, um, something old, something new, huh? Yeah. Let me think. Uh, um, let me think. I'll go for, what's it called? Um, 
when the palace is burned by um, Mary God. Nice. That's a great, great list. And um, now, um, you, you, you know, uh, just to be first, because I, I, I'm not necessarily saying that um, that that's the best guitar stuff because it's not me to judge, but just you know, those albums which I just knocked out then, I think cover the wide spectrum. You know, I needed six, so I could put a Black Sabbath album in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you almost it's, Black Sabbath is almost a foregone conclusion for any metal guitar. Yeah, player, can, yeah. Can you just write that in somewhere? Would you? <laughs> yeah, it's just like sort of the grand prize winner, if you will. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got I got to see um, um, Ronnie, and with, with the Heaven and Hell, and Tony and Giza, and Vidya to see when he came to New Zealand. You know, and I, I longed my whole life to see see you know the original. Uh, Black Sabbath, but now I'm actually really happy that I got to see Heaven and Hell because Ronnie was just, Ray, Ronnie James Dio was just incredible, and Tony Iommi was just doing these solos, man, that were just like, dude, he, he, he's just off the Richter scale, you know, in clarity, you know what I mean, and making that stuff up, you know, it's just had it off the, off the charts. Yeah, it's amazing that how, it, especially with Ronnie, that the older he got, most vocalists sort of lose something. He didn't lose a thing. He sounded as good his last performance as he did the very first time I ever heard him. It was just incredible. I, I, I never realized how small he was, Rustin, you know? Oh, yeah. He's and, a and tiny he, guy. And he, and he had his little boots on and all that stuff. And, you know, it's like, but his voice is just like a powerhouse, you know? It's just like, you know, I I I I hope that so many of the kids who listen to metal still go back and um really appreciate that old stuff because um a lot of it's unbeatable. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean it's hard for for anybody new coming out. You know, people always say I hate it when they compare my band or my voice or my guitar to these players, and it's like, you know, metal's been around now for a few decades. It's hard for anybody to come out with something that's extraordinarily new. There's only a few signature people out there but you know everybody's got to find their own their own place and everything now for you i know Dimebag was your guy but who were was there a guitar player a song an album or something that was sort of an epiphany moment for you where you said this is what i want to do yeah um, i was on uh it was on uh christmas day okay christmas day and i was 11 years old and my brother's my older brother, my, my only other sibling, his birthday is on the sixth of December. Okay, so he was he was fifteen, fourteen, fifteen. And he said to me, "Buy me um, a heavy metal album for my birthday on sixth of December." Mm-hmm. So I bought him a, a Def Leppard album. He said, "Take it back. I don't want it. There's a new band out called but I've been out for a while now. If I've just got a new album out." It's called Power Slave by Iron Maiden. So I went and bought that for him. I put it on in the family house on Christmas Day. And my own mum and my own dad remembers the whole change in me. I heard Ace of High, dude. And every single little thing that I'd ever heard up till then went out the door. <laughs> I just I just couldn't believe it. You know? What, what they could do on the guitar and drums and bass and vocal. I, I was just shell-shocked. And that puts you on the road to where you are now. So yeah, I'm a huge Maiden fan. I mean, and that's the thing. It's like you know, a lot of people think if you if you haven't become a rock star in your 20s, you know, that's it. But you know, I'm here to tell you, you got to pursue those dreams. You know, I know you're uh, you're what almost 40 now. Hey, hey, hey! Slow up. <laughs> oh, well, I know you've been no, playing no, no. guitar for like no, no, 23 no, I'm, years. I'm 39. I'm just coming up 39. 39. Coming up 39. <laughs> I know. I'm 38 now. I'm 39, May the 25th. But I'm like a big kid. (laughs) Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like it's weird. There comes this point when you're in your late 20s or something where everything, you just stop. It's like you get 10, 15 years older and you still feel like you're in your 20s. Nothing's changed. But but anyway, so, I mean, it's great that you just kept on going at it because if you hadn't, we wouldn't have Legacy of Disorder. And, you know, the... The new album, Last Man Standing, great stuff. Anybody who's fans of any of those bands, Pantera, Lamb of God, um, 
even Metallica, early Metallica and stuff like that. And, and uh, you know, they've got to take a listen to you guys and check you out because I really think that they're going to like what they hear. Now, I know that the album is supposed to be available sometime in May. Do you guys have a release date yet? No, we, we, we don't have a release date. What we're doing is um, we're not selling that in shows. Right. And, um, you know, we're, we're trying to track down a distribution deal, and Chip's really helping us with that at the moment. You know, we're, we're a new band, and, and it's quite a big thing for someone to take us on. But um, I, I know it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But, um, I want to thank you, uh, Rana, for taking some time to talk with us. And, uh, again, remind everybody, get out there. Check out the band's uh, web page. You can get on their Facebook. It's facebook.com, Legacy of Disorder. And uh, find out everything on there. Get on their Twitter and everything. And stay. I, know, I notice you guys use social media. I mean, that's the big thing with bands nowadays. Yeah, definitely. So. Definitely. We, 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 we try to put as much on as what we can of what we're up to during the day. I mean, sometimes we don't have internet. We, we've got wireless in our RV. But, you know, we do try to keep on top of it all the time. Just just plug away at everything you can, every avenue, eh? Yeah, I mean, it really is more of a do-it-yourself uh, sort of thing now. You don't get nearly as much from record labels, even if you have a good one. Anyway, this is Rustin with Metalholic, Rana Frolic from Legacy of Disorder, out on the road right now with Gore. Thanks again so much for taking the time to talk with us. Hey, that's, that's awesome, Rustin. Cheers, I- buddy. You have a great show tonight. Take care, be safe on the road, and keep metal alive. Will do.